we have uh, already traveled a long journey together. We have uh, spoken about attacking queen. We have spoken about when to exchange queens. We have spoken about where to find the proper place for the queen. Uh, also about coordination of the queen with the other pieces. So we have done a lot of work. And now we have uh, another chapter uh, um, before us. And we will speak about the mistakes that are usually made when we are playing um, with a queen. I think that this is a, also an effective way to see the mistakes of the others and therefore to avoid the mistakes in your own games. So uh, we will have a look at several examples where even the very strong players just decide incorrectly when it comes to the play with a queen. Let us start with an example uh, from the very top level. Uh, from a situation where uh, Temur Rajabo was playing white and uh, Jan Nepomniachny was playing black and was black to move. And yeah, okay, this position is definitely more uh, pleasant for white because uh, the knight is um, like relatively strong in the center. We have this soulmates, knight and the queen, which is always nice to have. But also this, this, this pawn is simply extremely far advanced. Uh, but black's position also has its uh, merits. Yeah, the black has got a very nice control of the d-file, the bishop is e extremely strong, and um, where, except of, of the threat of, of uh, c c7, c8, black has got zero other problems in the positions, basically. So all we need to do is to block the C pawn somehow. How shall we do that? I think that you already know that you should block the, uh, the, uh, the pawn with some kind of a cheaper uh, blocker that can stay there for a long time. So the most uh, logical and strategically best move is, of course, bishop c7. Uh, and after bishop c7, okay, white can play, for example, g3 to be sure that the bishop is not too active along this line. And now black can simply play, I don't know, king g7 and sit and wait. And probably there is not much that can happen to black. Uh, the, the bishop is extremely stable there. And if white will try to create some play to get it away from there, black would turn to some counterplay against the, the white king. So. Uh, this is probably around equal. But uh, uh, Rajabov uh, decided otherwise. He uh, probably wanted to get a tempo or get some kind of a, a direct play and he played queen c7. Which, of course, yeah, it creates some kind of, of a threat against the h2 pawn. But from the strategic point of view, the queen is a very bad blocker. And we've spoken about that uh, several chapters uh, ago. So yeah, queen c7 is, is, is not a very cash, cautious move at all. White play g3 anyway. And now uh, the problem is that uh, once the, the queen is on c7, uh, there is not a clear way how to you know change the uh, the blocker. If you go away, white simply plays c7, of course. So the the queen is kind of stuck there, and its potential uh, uh, has uh, is being very low because it's immobile and it's defensive. And as you remember from the very first chapter, that is a problem. So black played rook b4, white played king h1. Again, white is having some some kind of domination, so he can afford slow play. Lovely move, king h1. Black has got uh, two pieces that are operating on dark squares now or are dedicated to dark squares, so it makes a lot of sense just to go away from these squares. Now black plays played king g7 and white played queen d1, uh, which might not be the strongest, but it's 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 a tricky stuff, of course. Uh, white can think about queen d7 so sometimes and, yeah, uh, might think about... Um, other other ideas and uh, most importantly it's also a trap because black played bishop d4 which le looks optically logical but now white has a very nice way how to win 
immediately. Can you spot it? Please try to stop the video and find out how white should be winning this one. And I'm sure that you found 96. That's a very nice move. And now uh, here is a very nasty check. And also knight b5 is another fork, which, which is very, very uh, inconvenient for black. So now you can see that black wanted to be active desperately. Uh, he played uh, queen c7 to gain a tempo. He played bishop d4 to have an active bishop, but it didn't pay off. Yeah, the, the, the more solid way would be just to block the c7, uh, the c6 pawn with the bishop safely and be modest and less active, but much more safer. So black played king h7 now, and after knight b5, he had to give up an exchange, which of course means that white is winning because uh, the, the bishop is no match for the rook. Now white simply uh, entered via the light squares. And yeah, that's basically it. Now he undermined the bishop and that means that, uh, uh, yeah, the black's position is collapsing. So I'm not surprised that black uh, resigned here. So we might use this chapter about queen mistakes also as some kind of a um, repetition of what we have learned already. So here we are uh, repeating, uh, please don't use your queens as a blockading piece. Usually they are too expensive for that and uh, their value uh, as a blockading piece is quite low.